the ultimate VA rating guide for knee pain. If you have knee pain, I'm going to show you how to get the VA disability rating and how to claim it. Everything that you need to know, including some things that you probably didn't think about. I'm going to show you this within five minutes, so enough wasting time. I'm Jordan Anderson, VA Claims Academy. Hit the like button and subscribe. Before you even look at the board, what's the first thing that you know that you need for any VA disability claim? At least you should know. You need a diagnosis. You need an actual medical diagnosis for knee pain in order to even start. It's a non-starter. If you do not have a diagnosis, you're putting the cart before the horse. Get a diagnosis first. Secondly, we're going to worry about service connection. So that can happen in many forms. If you were already diagnosed during your active duty service, hey, you're implicitly service connected by default, okay? You're implicitly service connected. That doesn't mean they have to service connect you, but that means that that's where the default is uh, until you prove otherwise, you're going to be service connected, okay? Now, if you have, again, if it's both knees at this point, right? If you have a both knees that are injured, and let's say you jumped out of airplanes, something like that, you were a jumper. Even if you were not diagnosed in service, it's possible that, hey, you tell them, hey, both my knees are injured. I was jumping out of planes. You know, it's very common that your knees get beat up. Maybe your back gets beat up. They could give that to you. They do not have to, though. So that's another way to get service connected. Let's go into how you are rated. So look out for this. Number one is range of motion. You're going to need to know what to expect here at the C&P exam after you watch this. Because when you go to the compensation and pension exam, right, this is the examination that they schedule you for once you file for your knee claim. They're going to have the examiner pull up this tool. This is called the goniometer. It's measuring your range of motion. That's what ROM here stands for, your range of motion. So they're going to measure, hey, how much can you bend? How much can you extend the knee? That in itself is a rating, right? Not the pain level, but the actual measurement of the range of motion. My recommendation is to stop when you feel pain, right? Because pain itself is not rated. So to me, in real life, you're probably stopping once you feel pain. You're not pushing through. Why would you push through now just because some examiner asked you to? You're not in the military anymore. It's not a lawful order. Stop when you feel pain. Don't be a hero. Secondly, this is kind of a loophole, kind of an advanced tactic here. If you have instability in that joint area, instability in one knee or both, make sure you indicate that. Indicate that to one to your C&P examiner, but more importantly, indicate that to uh, uh, on your personal statement, right? So you write your personal statement on form 4138. Make sure that if it's applicable to you, that you have instability in that joint, instability in the knees, indicate that. Why? Because range of motion itself is one condition. It's a disability. Instability is actually a whole separate diagnostic code. And yes, you could get compensated for instability on the left knee as well as lack of range of motion, limitation of flexion on the left knee. And you can get two ratings for the same knee. And no, it is not pyramiding. Pyramiding is getting compensated twice for the same disability. These are two separate disabilities, even though they're in the same joint. It's not pyramiding. There's kind of a technique that people don't know. Bilateral, we kind of already talked about that. So if you were a jumper and both knees are hurt, sometimes they look at you like, hey, you know what? Yeah, this guy was hurt during service or this guy was hurt during service. That could happen. Now, secondaries. Secondary conditions that can you know, come out from knee pain, things like back pain, right? So if you have one knee that is hurt, it can ultimately work its way up to your back because of abnormal gait, G-A-I-T. It's the posture by which you walk, right? So maybe your one step is shorter than the other. This can have, lead to an imbalance. It can work your way up its posterior chain, right? Unless you have knees that are just floating in place and not connected to the rest of your body, you have to think creatively and honestly about what is affected by your knees. What is affected by your service-connected knee condition? It could be that your hips that are, at, that are painful now. It could be your back that's painful now. Maybe that back works its way up to your neck that's painful now. All these things are secondarily service-connected. If you get that nexus letter uh, stating that, hey, a doctor agrees with you, it's at least as likely as not. If you get a personal statement, 
These are things that can be added on and really high value. Lastly, mental. The mental aspect of chronic knee pain can't be overlooked. Again, you could try to be a tough guy and think that, hey, yeah, my chronic knees don't affect me mentally at all, right? But ultimately, if you can't play with your kids, you can't do the things that you want to do that does have a mental toll. If it gets to a certain point for you, then yeah, you need to go ahead and get that diagnosed and ultimately see if you can claim a secondary mental condition, for example, depression, anxiety, somatic symptom disorder, chronic pain syndrome, secondary to that knee pain, and that on average, that secondary claim alone is worth a 70% rating. That turns something that's otherwise a low value claim, the knees maybe 10, maybe 20% into something that is actually high value. Last thing I'll leave you with, when you do get rated bilateral, meaning both knees, there is a certain bonus that you get. It's called the bilateral bonus. It's essentially a little small multiplier that because you have something on both sides of your body, for instance, both arms, both shoulders, both knees in this example, you get a bit of a bonus to where it's actually more than the sum of its parts. There's a little tidbit for you. I'll leave you with that. I might be over five minutes. You take care. Hit the like button, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.